Okay, so we have a quiz on Friday. The quiz covers 8-1 and 8-2. We just spent the last two days covering 8-1. We're only gonna spend one day on 8-2, it's not that long. And then tomorrow we're gonna review for the quiz. The quiz review is already posted and it does have the answers. So anybody who wants to start looking at it ahead of time, um, that quiz review is already posted. We'll review again tomorrow as well as go over these homework answers tomorrow and the warm up. So today we're gonna cover our first shortcut for proving triangles similar. Now we learn shortcuts when we prove triangles congruent. If you recall back, there were five of them. We had side, 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 angle, side, angle, angle, side, angle, side, angle, and then hypotenuse leg. There's only three shortcuts for proving them similar. The first one is AA, or which stands for angle, angle. Now, this angle, angle similarity theorem only works for triangles. So this is only for triangles. You can't use it on any other type of polygon. So it only works for triangles. And what it states that if two angles of one triangle are congruent to two angles of a second triangle, then the two triangles are similar. So you'll be given two triangles. They may be separate like this or they could also be like nestled inside each other, like you could have a smaller one inside a larger one. And you're gonna look for two congruent angle pairs. If you can find them, then you know the triangles are similar. You'll no longer need to match every angle pair as a congruent pair or show that the sides are proportional. All you need to do is look for two congruent angle pairs. So. Once you do that, you'll be able to write a statement, a similarity statement. And the similarity statement here is triangle ABC is similar to triangle DEF. And the order is important. So for example, notice angle A here has the single congruency mark and it's matching with D. So that's why they're both in the first spot. And then the next one is angle B. It's got the double marks here, and so does E. So B is in the second spot, and so is E. And then lastly, C and F don't have a mark, but we already know by our third angles theorem that we learned before that C and F are also congruent, and that's why they're in the third spot. So on the quiz, I will give you a picture of two triangles, and if you can show that they are similar, by finding two congruent angle pairs, then you will say, yes, they're similar, and then you'll give me the similarity statement. If they are not similar, you will just answer no, and you do not list a similarity statement. So before we had to find three pieces of information, now we're only looking for two. So let's apply it on the next slide. We have four different examples here and it wants us to tell whether the triangles are similar or not. So let's go ahead, and now sometimes it'll be easier if you pull the triangles apart when the smaller one is located inside the larger one. Whether or not you're doing this in Notability and you just wanna outline it on the picture that's there and copy, cut, paste, you can do that. So for example, the two triangles I'm referring to here, and I'm gonna add letters to this as well, because this is how you'll see it on the quiz. This could say that this is triangle ABC, which would be the large one here. So I could redraw it. And I have ABC. And then I'm gonna add two other letters for the smaller one. And the smaller triangle is the one at the top here. And that's gonna be ADE. Now notice it had the little arrows here indicating that these sides are parallel. So whenever I see parallel lines, I reach back to that chapter where we learned about all those special angle pairs, the alternate interior, alternate exterior, corresponding, and look to help me find some congruent angle pairs. So if we think about these two sides here, as being parallel, 
I could also indicate that this side here is a transversal, which would then make this angle here, ADE here, congruent to ABC because they're corresponding. So that would make angle D down here congruent to angle B. Now, the most obvious one would be that angle A, congruent to angle A, and if you were writing a, a proof, it would be reflexive. But you could also say that this angle up here at the tippy top, angle A, is the same angle A in both the red and the blue triangle. And let me add a second so I can tell the difference. So now that I've labeled two congruent angle pairs, I can say that yes, these two triangles are similar, and the similarity statement that I would be writing, because I'm using the angle angle, because I found two angles, I could say that triangle ABC is similar to triangle ADE. Again, the order that you match this with is important. Now, automatically, I could have also shown that angle C and E were equal um, just by putting in the other transversal. Because if you think about it, this side could have also been a transversal, making this angle here, one, two, three, angle C congruent to angle E, which would have been this one here. But I don't need to show all three. All I need to find is two. The next one is obvious. It's already marked for us. We don't have to really do any work here. I can see that this angle is congruent to this one, and then this one to this one. This would be yes. Let's say it had letters, A, B, C, X, Y, Z. I could state that triangle A, B, C is similar to triangle X, Y, Z. And again, they're all in the same spot. So when they're apart like this, if they've already got markings, it's easy to see. Sometimes when they're together, that's when it gets a little bit more challenging. For C, now, if you recall back to your congruent triangle part, <clears throat> we could have also indicated here that this side that they share is congruent to itself. And if you think about it, these are actually two congruent triangles, side angle side. Just know that every congruent triangle pair is also a similar triangle pair. However, let's go ahead and look for a second angle pair. Now, we definitely can't assume that this is a right angle, so that's not gonna work for us. However, if we look at this triangle as one big one first and realize that we have two congruent sides here, then this tells me that this is an isosceles triangle. Don't pay attention to the division here yet. Just think of it as one big purple triangle. Then by my base angles theorem, I could say that these angles down here at the bottom are congruent. And now, if you look at this triangle here on the left as being the red one, and then outline this one on the right as the blue one, notice this angle up at the top, we got an angle pair here, and then we've got the angle pair here. So again, these would also be similar using angle angle. And again, if I wanted to add letters, A, B, C, D, I could state that triangle A, B, D is similar to triangle C, B, D. Pretty good there. All right, and then the last one on this slide. Again, if it helps you to pull them apart, I'm referring to this one right here. So if I pull that out, 
and it's got a congruent mark right here. And let's add some letters here as well. A, B, C, D, E. So this would be triangle A, B, E. And then if I outline the large one, this one would be A, C, D, and angle C has the same mark as E. So, so far I've got one pair. I need to find the other pair. And again, that's the obvious one, the reflexive. This angle A here is the same for both the red and the blue. So I can say that these two triangles are similar using angle angle again. And my similarity statement would be triangle ABE. And again, the order doesn't matter how you start out with, just make sure the second three letters match perfectly. So then this one would go from A and B, notice it didn't have a mark, so it goes to the D and then the C. So just be careful that everything matches appropriately. Be good there. Let's try the next example. So it wants me to find the value of X. So again, I've got the smaller triangle at the top. I can pull that one out. And then I can deal with the really large one here, the whole thing. So that one will be in blue. Now, to find the length of this side right here, I'm going to add 3 plus 1, and the total length of this side is 4. And then the total length of this side is going to be x plus 5. Now, the reason why I can do this is my sides will be proportional because, again, I can find two congruent angle pairs <coughs> because I've got parallel sides. So this angle here, if this is parallel, I could use the side as my transversal, making this angle here congruent to this one here. So this would be congruent here. And then you could also do the one up at the top, the one that they share. So because they are similar, I know sides are proportional. Now, I can either choose to take this side that's here and put it over this one. So I can set my proportion up as three over four. And then I also have to do the same thing for this diagonal one, put it as five over X plus five. Now, if you were to have preferred to do four over three, then you would have had to do X plus five over five. Either proportion, will get you to the correct answer. Before we were always doing the right picture over the left, but here we don't have a right and a left picture. So this way it doesn't matter when you're trying to solve for X. Really the only time it matters is when you're trying to list a scale factor. So let's go ahead and you will get a question like this where part of your side is gonna be an expression. So I need to do the cross products here. So I need to multiply five times four and three times X plus five. So I'm gonna fill it in as three times X plus five equals four times five. I need to distribute the three to the X and the five. I'm now going to solve my equation by subtracting 15, 3x equals 5, divide by 3, and x equals 5 over 3 as a mixed number, 1 and 2 thirds. If you were to make it a decimal, it would actually be 1.6 repeating. So in this case, I would definitely leave it a mixed number. All right, now, this example, it wants you to answer four different things. 
Now, you don't necessarily have to answer them in order. So what I'm gonna do is first, I'm gonna separate my two triangles, and then from there, I'll start answering all the different parts of it. So again, I've got a smaller triangle that is located inside the larger one. So let me go ahead and pull the blue one out and label the sides. So this is D, E, B, four, three, and the Y. And now let me redraw the red one as well, just so we can see what corresponds here. So this is A, B, C, this is eight. Now, the length of CB here is going to be found by adding three plus four, so it's seven. And then the length of AB, notice it's an X and a three, so that becomes X plus three. Now, in order to come up and to check to see if they're similar, I need to find two congruent angle pairs. Again, I've got the obvious one here at angle B. So I know angle B is congruent to angle B because it's reflexive, it's the same angle in both. And again, I've got parallel sides. So again, I can use a transversal and find a pair of corresponding angles again. So because these two sides are parallel, I can use this as a transversal and I can say that this angle is congruent to this one. So this would be angle C here is congruent to angle D. I could have done the same thing for the other side as well and also have shown that E was congruent to A, but I don't need to show all three. So because I now know that these are similar figures, I know the sides are proportional. So they've already started the setup for my proportion here, um, but I could also go in and fill in my similarity statement. So I can see that angle A and angle E have the same markings. So since A is the first letter, I'm gonna put the first letter E here. And then my next letter is B. Well, the B is the same on both. So I'll put B next. And then you can also see that angle D and C have the same markings. So the last letter here is D. So the order matters. Make sure you match everything up. Now let's go ahead and do the same thing for the side lengths. So let's answer part C before we go back and find X and Y. So if you go ahead and look at your angle measures, so if you notice, they started here with BE. BE is the little blue one here, and they're matching it with BA. So then the next side I could say here, and it doesn't matter if you do the BC and the, or the CA, it doesn't matter what's next. So what I can do here is since they did the smaller triangle, I could say here that this is ED, and then I can say AC. And then the other side would be the BD, I'm sorry, the, D, the DB, and the CB. Now, if you would have preferred instead of ED and AC, you could have also said DE and CA. The order of these guys, these letters, doesn't matter. But notice all of the tops of the fraction all came from the blue triangle. And all of the denominators were the sides of the red triangle. So you just match the corresponding pairs. And this is how we're gonna solve for X and Y. We're gonna set up a proportion. So if I take this same statement here, let me just go ahead and rewrite it. The BE, BE over BA, ED over AC, DB over CB. Let me go ahead and fill in what each of these are. BE was three, BA is the X plus three. ED is Y, and AC was eight, and then DB is four, 
and CB is seven. So the fraction or the ratio that I'm gonna use for both of my proportions is this one. I'm actually gonna pair it to find Y, and then I'm also gonna use it to find X. So I'm gonna actually set up two different proportions, three over X plus three equals four over seven, and then Y over eight equals four over seven. And this is how I can find X and Y by using that one side length ratio that had numbers, the four over seven. Now, if you would have flipped it and done seven over four, then you would have also had to flip the other fraction as well. So let's go ahead and solve these proportions. Again, I'm multiplying diagonally to set to get my answer. So I'm gonna be solving four times x plus three equals three times seven. Distribute the four, move the 12, subtract, divide, And I get X equals nine over four, which is two and one fourth, or 2.25. Then I have to solve the second proportion to find the value of Y. So again, cross products here, Y times seven, four times eight. Seven Y equals four time, eight times four, which is 32 divide by seven, y is equal to 32 over seven, which simplifies to four and four over seven. In this case, I wouldn't try to make it a decimal because four sevenths is actually 0.5714285. It's a crazy long decimal. Unless the question said to round to the tenths place, then you could make it a decimal. But in this case, I would just leave it as a mixed number. So if you wanted to fill that in up here, so y was four and four sevenths, and x was 2.25 or two and one fourth. Now this chapter, we will have proofs on the test. However, there will not be a proof on the quiz. Um, if I gave you a proof on the quiz, it would probably be pretty easy because we only learned one shortcut. We haven't learned the other two yet. So we'll wait and we'll have a proof on the test, but not on the quiz. The quiz will have more of the word problems. So let's go ahead and take a look at the proof. Yes. Let's go ahead and set up our two columns for our proof. So we have our statement column, and we have our reasons column. So again, I'm gonna state the given. AC is parallel to BD, and that's given. Now, in order to prove that triangle AOC is similar to BOD, I need, I've only learned one shortcut, so I'm gonna look for two congruent angle pairs. Now, you can either choose to do the vertical angles or what we do need to use is at least one of the alternate interior angle pairs that are gonna be formed by my parallel lines here. So since AC is parallel to BD, I could use this as a transversal making angle C congruent to angle D, and these are alternate interior angles. So I can state that angle C is congruent to angle D, and my reason is the alternate interior angles theorem. Now, I could also use this other transversal and say that this angle pair, A and B, are also congruent 
and use the same reason here, that they're alternate interior angles. And really, that's all I needed. I just needed two angle pairs. So then now I can just say that triangle AOC is similar to BOD, and my reason is angle angle. You don't have to put angle angle similarity theorem. AA is fine. Now, if you only wanted to use one of those alternate interior pairs, you could have also added in instead, you could have also said that angle AOC is congruent to angle BOC, and your reason would have been vertical angles theorem. So instead of listing both alternate interior angle pairs, you could have done one of those and the vertical angle. Either way, all you need are two angle pair congruency statements. And then from there, your similarity statement. So these proofs will be nice and short. We will learn two more shortcuts next week. But for now, we just know one. We have one more example. This next example, this shadow question, is classic standardized test question. They like to put these shadow questions on PSATs, SATs, so understanding how to use similar triangles to solve these shadow questions is very helpful. So let's try our last example. Again, I'm gonna give myself a visual because all it is is a bunch of words. So I'm gonna draw my flagpole, and then I'm gonna draw the shadow from the flagpole, and I'm gonna label. So it says a flagpole cast a shadow that is 50 feet long. Then it says right next to that flagpole is a woman who's standing next to it. And she casts a shadow. Now, if you opened up the notes earlier, um, I did change the word here on her shadow from, it, originally it said inches, I changed it now to feet. So her shadow is 40 feet, and her height is 5 feet 4 inches. So what I need to do is turn this into either part of a foot or inches. I'm going to go ahead and work with her height in inches. So I know that there are 12 inches in a foot. So 12 times 5 is 60 plus the 4 so her height is 64 inches. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna set up my proportion. And I'm gonna go ahead and set up and I'm gonna match height with height and shadow with shadow. Because if you think about it, this sort of looks like a triangle. If you use their height and their shadow, and this is how we're gonna use the similar um, similarity to solve this. So I'm going to put the height of the, the flagpole over the height of the woman and then the shadow of the flagpole over the shadow of the woman. Now I'm going to go ahead and if you wanted to simplify this fraction to make things easier since we're not using a calculator, you can. Or you can work with it as is. It doesn't really matter. So I'm gonna simplify it. I'm gonna change that to five over four. And now I can go ahead and cross multiply. Four X equals 64 times five is 320. Divide by four and X equals 80. Now these are inches. Notice the question because if you notice this was inches, inches, and these are both feet, the question said, how tall is the flagpole to the nearest foot? So if I take 80 and convert it back to feet, I have to divide it by 12. And 80 divided by 12, 12 goes in here six times. And if I add a decimal point, it turns into 0.6 repeating. So rounded to the nearest foot, I could say that flagpole is about seven feet tall. 
So be able to answer shadow questions. Technically, I could also have set up my proportion by just taking the flag's information. So the flag height over its shadow and then the woman's height over her shadow and then cross multiply that way. Notice I'm still multiplying the exact same numbers and then dividing. So either way, but be able to answer a shadow question for the quiz as well. So that is it for the notes on 8.2. Remember the answer to number nine is four square root two. Um, when we cover chapter nine, we'll be talking about special right triangles as well as Pythagorean theorem to answer that question a little bit easier. Um, that question involved working with a radical, so we'll skip it for now.